Hello, Professor Anne and my fellow classmates. <clears throat> I hope you enjoy my vlog. This is my first ever, and so there will be some, possibly some rough spots. Um, <clears throat> I just want to mention the current situation. I hope everybody's keeping healthy and not going too stir crazy during this isolation. I know it's been incredibly difficult for me and my family. And <clears throat> if we're not loving each other, we are definitely doing a little hating but <laughs> we're getting through it. And um, I hope you enjoy my forecast. I do have to throw out a few disclaimers, and that is um, in my vlogging training, I'm having a little trouble figuring out where to look because it seems like when I look at the camera, I'm not exactly looking right at you. So <clears throat> I'll be flitting around a little bit. Um, also, another disclaimer is that what I, when I did my research on vlogs is I noticed that they have tendency to be kind of casual. So as far as like casual versus professional, I'm going to be probably a little casual on the casual side of things because I find that that's the nature of vlogs. So there might be some unedited mistakes and pronunci mispronunciations or whatever. I hope that adds to the charm. In any case, let's get on to my forecasts. I want to mention that almost all of my pictures that I'm showing came from the last two months of Bazaar Magazine, of which I subscribe. Uh, it's my favorite. I think they go outside the box. I think they're very exper experimental in their spreads and they're very artistic and the garments that they choose tend to be over the top, which I love. And so um, I'm gleaning from those uh, I just received May's edition and April's edition was the big spring forecast so there's tons of stuff in that and so I just wanted to mention I all my magazine shots are from Bazaar and uh, there might be a couple from I got off the internet and I'll mention those so on to my forecasts oh one more disclaimer uh, after I forecast my five trends, I am to judge whether I believe that they are a fad, if it's a cyclical style, or if I think it's a garment. Although I feel very underqualified to do that, I am going to attempt to do that. And so take that with a grain of salt. salt not, it just basically, even though I did a ton of research, it's going to come down to my opinion. <laughs> so here we go. My first forecast trend for spring of 2020 is the prairie dress. They are loose and flouncy and generally have a long sleeve, but not necessarily as we'll see. They are comfortable and they are quite projected to be popular. This is a picture of when I got off of Pinterest it didn't give me the designer so I don't know who it is uh, but you see they're tiered tiers are very in that's a big quality of the prairie dress when you see this a very loose fitting they could be roughly here is another one that is sleeveless so it's kind of got a tank top but it's also very loose they often are floral printed Here's a very modern, and I say a modern style one because it's short. It is, if those sleeves are not attached, detached, then they are substantially off the shoulder. That's pretty um, bold for a prairie dress. Note the puff sleeves there. This prairie dress over here is actually the color of wheat, and which basically means prairie. Here's a couple of more down there in the center. I've circled them. Very uh, particular uh, silhouette. Also you see the uh, floral printing going on there, floral prints. And this last one again, I'm just showing you this because of the tier, tiers in the skirt. There's three tiers in that. Add to the flounce, the fullness. 
but you see they're very le loose, loose fitting, kind of a loose bodice. Um, all of these had similar, many of them had the puff sleeves, which is my second trend. Let me grab a picture. Ooh, well, not that one. That one will come later. It's a hint of what's coming later. But the puffed sleeves are big this spring. These are bishop sleeves. Uh, long puff sleeves generally have a little cuff down on the bottom, but these are quite substantial and large. Here's Gigi Hadid. She's in a puff sleeve. Uh, also displaying another uh, trend, which is the polka dots. It's not one of my trends, but it is. Um, you're seeing a lot of that right now in the spring catalogs. This picture cracks me up because it is right out of 1970s, but it isn't. It is Marc Jacobs 2020. Big on the runway, huge puff sleeves, and actually kind of the peasant dress there too. And I picked this one because these are just over the top. Uh, they almost look like paper and paint, like a kid could have made that, which I love fashion that looks like a kid made. And um, Bella Hadid, she's one of my favorite models. And um, next, my next forecast is the white shirt, which traditionally is classic. This came out of a spread featuring jeans. And what goes best with jeans is that classic white shirt. I'm going to flip it over. You're going to see the other side. There it is again. The white, classic white shirt. This is another example. It's kind of classic. It's tucked in. It's not, not cropped, but it does. It's got those full sleeves. Classic collar. It's just full. And then I love this one because this one is right out of the 80s, but it's now. It is now. This is exactly what I was wearing in high school. That tie, the long pulled out classic white shirt with your military boots. Oh yeah. Now we're starting to see the different um, expressions of the white shirt. Now this is an ad for shoes, but that those white shirts, there's a layering quality. They're long. They're asymmetrical, but that is the classic white shirt. Look at the collars. This one's a little different. It's a dress, but it has that total white shirt, classic white shirt feel to it. And then this is my favorite because this one is just totally experimental. Yes, that all that white is the shirt. You can see the button placket goes all the way down. There it is. It's all one piece. I love it. It's great. And jumping from the white shirt, we go to my fourth trend forecast, and that is the vest. Now, I love this vest because it is perfect with this 80s. Now we would have had this 80s shirt and tie with that vest over it. Com complete 80s look. Loose, over o oversized. Here is the vest as the top garment. No jacket, no shirt. It is the main garment on the top of this person. This is Zoe Kravitz. Here is the vest in a more traditional sense. Uh, layers, blouse, jacket over trousers. It's a great look. Fitted, fitted vest. Here's another vest which I, I love because it is very different. It's like I don't know, it's got the tank top straps, but it's got these tails on it as if it was the tux jacket. It is also the main garment. It is the shirt of this outfit. It's the top. It's great. And I also love this vest. 
It's a little bit different and a little bit classic. She's wearing this dress, just, excuse me, vest as if it was a jacket. She's wearing it for like um, warmthers, you know. I'll note the little puff sleeve there also. And oh, my next forecast and my last forecast is the corset. Underwear becomes outerwear. This is very sleek, very fitted, very modern version of a corset. Whereas on the other hand, this corset looks like something from the 1700s, including that print, that twall fabric. Very classic, right down to this very modern interpretation of a corset. Very loose, not fitted at all but still gives you the lines or impression of where the boning would go in, those vertical lines. It's layered on top of something else. I think this is a great modern example of corset redefined for sure. Okay, those are my five forecasts. Now, as far as judging, fad, cycle or classic, I will attempt to do that. I believe that the prairie dress is a cycling style silhouette. Um, I don't know, not to get too philosophical, but I believe that just the whole idea of who wore that prairie dress originally, that was a pioneering, courageous, adventurous, determined, hard-working woman and I think maybe with the Me Too movement we're starting to see that same symbol coming back. Um, I watched a show a few years ago called um, Pioneer House where they set modern people in a pioneer setting in Wyoming I think. they It was a summer uh, season but they were to live as if they were preparing for a Wyoming winter so they were chopping a lot of wood and the young girls, the teenager young adult girls in the um, party, and they were all dressed the part, ripped those corsets off within the first couple of weeks. And they were like, no way, we're not, we're not living in this. And they also untied, loosened up what they were wearing. And it was just an example. The historians that were involved in the show said they really thought uh, probably a lot of that was going on when they were working in the fields and stuff. They probably were dressing down a little bit to get some of those duties done. But that's a huge message <laughs> and symbol for women these days. So I don't know. I think it. Uh, we've seen it before. I've been around long enough to see that prairie style come around. So I think we will see it around again. I think it's cyclical. Uh, the puff sleeved, I think for the moment, I think they're kind of a fad. I don't think they're going to hang around. I don't think we see them as much. I don't think we see them come around very often. I think they are impractical. I don't think they're comfortable. I think they get in the way. I also think that they may be too much of a feminine symbol. They may be a little too feminine, maybe a little too young little girl uh vibe to them so I don't they it's been a while since they've been around and when they come around they come around quick and they leave quick and I think that might happen again with these this round of puff sleeve um, the white shirt hands down classic will always be here I don't think it's ever gone out I th think what we see is the deconstruction we see the expression we see imagination with it we see um, wild interpretations of it, but it is here to stay. I think some of those interpretations change, but the shirt, the white shirt is a classic and will remain. Vests, I think are kind of like the prairie dress. Those come and go. I think, again, they're comfortable and then they're not comfortable. And so um, I, I, they may stick around, for longer than the puff sleeves, but they will be 
they'll go and then they'll come back in a couple de decades or whatever the last one the corset uh, no that's not going to stick around very long they're not comfortable unless you absolutely have had that fitted for you and that is very expensive to do and then they're very comfortable and they're very they help your posture you actually feel great they can be great but it's very hard to get one one that fits you for your body and two to wear it long enough to where it's molded like a good pair of shoes so they're expensive in that sense so I don't know how long they're gonna stick around and all that being said in today what's going on right now that corset is kind of a dressy thing how much are we gonna be dressing up to go out for in the next couple of years so I think some of this stuff is gonna go on the back burner that's for special occasions or you know going out going to clubs festivals concerts whatever I think we're gonna see less of that it's just not gonna be practical so I, I think the course it's gonna be kind of a fat all right that's my deduction on those five trends but there are a couple other things I just wanted to mention because I couldn't resist and that is I think there's a huge fad that's gonna come and go really fast. And that is the fad of 1960s wallpaper, wallpaper print. Yes, that's what they're calling it. 1960s wallpaper print. This is, I love it. I would wear this in a second, but I may be the only one. Few people would wanna wear this. It's very bold. You have, it's, it's an acquired taste. This is not for everybody, and as a matter of fact, I think it's for very few people. And it is going strong, but I don't know how strong it's gonna go. And I see, I'm showing you Fendi here, but Fendi is not the only one. It is everywhere. But I don't know who's gonna be wearing this. I don't know, maybe we get out of isolation and we feel like we just gotta bleh, we just gotta get it all out and we all pop something like this on, I don't know. But that is one fad that I think is gonna come and go pretty fast. Now, there's another thing, a trend I think is gonna take off. Just in my research of looking for influencers on YouTube, on Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, I was looking on all of the major social medias and they were, uh, they had some big numbers. But I wanna tell you who had really big numbers is a group that are calling themselves history bounders. History bounders are people who integrate some element of the past into their wardrobe. So it, some of them are full on Victorian, Edwardian, 40s, whatever, and then some of them are just a little an, a, a shoes, a bag, a hair thing or a hairstyle so some of them are just little bits and pieces and I think we're gonna see a lot of that as a matter of fact we already are seeing some of this look at this Gigi Hadid look at that head wrap that is come total 1940s her whole outfit no but the head wrap absolutely I love this total 1930s love this look but yeah, 1930s. Again, 1960s. All right, see some of that uh, wallpaper print. This is a silhouette, it's a classic, it continues to come around. 1960s. And then as I said, some just incorporate an element. Check out those boots. Very Victorian vibe. Here they are again. Lacing up. And this, I lo absolutely love this. This silhouette is very Edwardian. Love that. Yeah. And least but not, last but not least, is Dolce Gabbana. Boy, do they, they can really go over the top. This is total 1940s Victorian. Wow. But as you see, I think we're going to see a lot more 
of this history bounding. I, and I have a I have a theory about it because of what we're going through right now. Um, I think we have very good examples of the early in the early last century with World War One, the Spanish flu pandemic, the uh, depression, and then right into World War Two. The first half of that century was brutal. And we know that the people who came out of it, who are still around us, many of them, they're just phenomenal. And so I think we kind of lean back to say, hey, they made it. We can come out of that. And in all of that, they were still thinking about fashion. They were still getting up, putting makeup on, doing their hair. They were still plugging forward. And so I think we kind of like to lean on those people who've already been there, done that. And so I think we are definitely going to see, ah, the original puff sleeves. Ooh, women, wear, get the vote and wear the vest. Oh yes, and the corset. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the research for this. Um, this was a whole new experience. Forgive my mistakes, and thank you for watching. <laughs>